Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here this morning for what is a very exciting day for the University of Texas at Austin. I'm Bill Powers. I'm the president of the University of Texas at Austin. And I said this is an exciting day for us. In the development of any institution, you know, there are a few critical moments, moments where the energy shifts and the institution takes on a new form and new functions and enters a new era. In the development of UT Austin and our medical school, there have already been several of those moments. Certainly the moment that Senator Kirk Watson decided he would bring a medical school to Austin or die trying. <laughs> the passage of Proposition 1 by the voters of Travis County that enabled us to partner with Central Health. The moment that the Seton Healthcare family committed a new teaching hospital to Central Texas. The day our regents, Chairman Foster, the day our regents voted and approved and supported this medical school. The gift from Michael and Susan Dell and the foundation that gave the school its name. And there will be more of these moments to come. Certainly the groundbreaking and the ribbon cutting of new buildings. The first day of study for the inaugural class of medical students. The first commencement as we award those first MDs. All of those will be critical moments. And this morning is also one of those special days. So today it's my great pleasure to announce that we have selected the founding dean of UT's Dell Medical School, Dr. Clay Johnston. Clay Johnson is a, is a physician, and he's a PhD. He comes to us from the University of California at San Francisco, where he currently is Associate Vice Chancellor of Research. He served as Director of Stroke Service and as a Professor of Neurology and Epidemiology. And he served as Director of the Clinical and Transla Translational Science Institute. He earned his bachelor's at Amherst College, completed his medical degree at medical school at Harvard, and earned his PhD in epidemiology from the University of California at Berkeley. He's published extensively on the prevention and treatment of stroke and has won multiple national honors for his work in that field. We have a vision of creating at UT Austin one of the finest medical schools in the world. And we have the opportunity to do it from the ground up. The cornerstone of that school is its founding dean. Dr. Johnson, Clay, thank you for accepting that challenge. I know you're the right person to help us make this long-term dream a reality at the University of Texas. I think it's safe to say that if there's any one person who we owe the most thanks, it's Senator Watson. Senator, I want to thank you for your passion and your wisdom throughout this process. We'll be hearing from Senator Watson in a moment. I want to thank our mayor, Lee Leffenwell, for his support and for being here today, Senator Mayor. Thanks to the Michael and Susan Dale Foundation and to Aliyah Husseini, who is also with us today. The Kane Tech Foundation and Frank Dinius for the faith they put on us early in this process. To the Seton Healthcare family and Jesus Garza and to Central Health, the health district for Travis County and Clark Hydric. We'll hear from both of them in a moment. 
and on our campus, Vice Provost Bob Messing, who chaired the search committee, our interim senior dean, Sue Cox, Ken Shine from the UT system, and certainly uh, our current chancellor, uh, vice chancellor, Ray Greenberg. And of course, our chancellor for all of his support, and I'll be introducing him in a moment. And finally, let me thank the two provosts on our campus who have done so much to make this possible. Steve Leslie, who's with us today, the effort he's put into this effort over many years is astonishing. And to our current provost, Greg Fenves. Greg, thank you for all your help and for your leadership. And now I've thanked our chancellor, but it's uh, an honor to thank him again and introduce somebody who knows a great deal about both medicine and medical education, and whose support and leadership have been invaluable in creating the Dell Medical School, UT System Chancellor, Dr. Francisco Cigarella. Well, President Powers, thank you very much for uh, that introduction, but also, you know, for your comments that are literally felt, you know, from the heart, and, and just the magnitude and the impact of today's announcement. I am so excited uh, that the University of Texas at Austin has recruited the founding dean, Dr. Clay Johnston, who, who's going to provide remarkable leadership to the Dell School of Medicine. Uh, he is an internationally recognized uh, physician and scholar, and we are recruited him from one of the finest schools of medicine in the world. Let me just personalize this a little bit, Clay. So uh, my father is a physician. He's still practicing medicine at the age of 89 and is a proud alumnus of the University of Texas at Austin. And uh, his, his entire life has been about education. And without telling him you know, who we recruited, I did convey to him that we would be announcing uh, the founding dean of the Dell School of Medicine. And I've got to tell you, you know, a tear of joy, you know, came out of his eyes because this has been a vision of his for, you know, over six decades. And so um, just to kind of convey to you what this means to the people of Texas. And also, as President Powers stated, an accomplishment of this magnitude does not happen by itself. It really is a team effort. And Bill recognized so many of those leaders who had and will continue to have such a leadership role in making sure that the School of Medicine becomes one of our world's greatest schools in medicine. But I'd be remiss if I did not mention uh, former chairman James Huffines, um, who worked with Senator Watson about how important this vision was and really began those conversations with Ken Shine in 2003. And then when President Powers came on board, uh, certainly, he was asked to provide his personal leadership and establish a strategic plan to get to this point. But even with that direction, we couldn't do it without a quarterback. And there is no doubt about it that Senator Kirk Watson has been that quarterback, and he can certainly throw a pass. And, uh, you know, Senator, um, just to be a part of your meetings that you brought for to, to be inclusive and to bring this entire community together uh, was really something that I learned a great deal from, uh, but also it conveyed your passion and your commitment. The voters of Travis County. Senator Watson and I had spoken so many times that without the voters of Travis County who really felt how important this was to improve the health of Texas and to expand medical education, you know, my hat goes off to the voters of Travis County and also to the leadership of Central Health. Also, uh, as, as Chancellor of the University of Texas, I also have to recognize two important campuses that have been a part of this journey to set the platform, allowing us to recruit Clay. University of Texas Medical Branch, you know, for over two decades, maybe three, has been involved in providing medical education kind of as a foundation uh, to kind of get this medical education concept in Austin. And then Southwestern Medical Center, 
who worked very closely with Seton to begin to establish the residency programs that really set the stage for uh, the Board of Regents approving the Dell School of Medicine. Uh, to my chairman, Chairman Foster, and to the Board of Regents, uh, they've done their part <laughs> in allocating uh, an increased distribution of AUF and STARS funding to help recruit Clay and to help recruit the founding faculty that will set the compass uh, for the School of Medicine. And like Bill, I also have to recognize the leadership of Susan and Michael Dell. Well, in closing, I would just like to convey that um, this is a remarkable opportunity. Um, we are going to be educating uh, the future leaders of medicine at the Dell School of Medicine. We are going to be augmenting healthcare, where I can tell you that the school will be saving hundreds of thousands of lives. Where unbelievably exciting biomedical research will be occurring that will also make this wonderful city mayor a innovation zone of biotechnology that, you know, the imagination leaves it unlimited in regards to its full potential. So I'm so proud of my board. I'm so proud of President Powers uh, for their tremendous leadership. So proud of Ken, you know, who's also expended just hundreds and hundreds of hours in this project. I honestly believe that this School of Medicine, the South Texas School of Medicine, you know, will be some of the most kind of landmark changing events that changes the landscape of Texas to the better. So thank you very much. Mr. President, Chancellor, Mr. Chairman, everyone that's up here and Dr. Shine and others uh, of the people in the office. Our community's big, positive, confident vision moves significantly closer to reality today. And it is indeed a great day to be in Austin, Texas. As I look out at this audience, I want to thank all of you for being here, and I can't run through every name of every person, but I want to thank all of you that are here today for all you've done to help us get here. Dr. Johnston, thank you for being here, and thank you for all you're about to do for this institution and this community. The medical school was born out of our community's hope. We hoped to create a wellspring of doctors to keep our friends, neighbors, and neighborhoods healthier. And we hoped for a hothouse of healthcare innovation, one we'll build from the ground up amid this university's existing strengths and resources to transform our economy even as it's transformative to our health. Dr. Johnston understands our hope. He shares it. If you talk to him for five minutes, you can hear his excitement. He envisions a top flight medical school built in partnership with its community, built around the demands of 21st century healthcare, a new institution free of the biases and baggage that made it so hard for so many to adapt to this landscape. He also understands why we have this opportunity. He appreciates deeply the community's optimism about the future, its commitment to this medical school, and the people's faith in us as demonstrated by their specific investment that makes all of this possible. He knows how to partner with Seton and Central Health and other entities to help fulfill the 10 goals in 10 years that were set out in 2011 and that Travis County embraced in 2012 by passing Proposition 1. So Dr. Johnson knows what we hope to achieve. He's creating a plan for achieving it, and he has the commitment, drive, and intelligence to follow through. He will succeed. 
and his success will be all of ours. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor and distinct pleasure to introduce to you the inaugural dean of the Dell Medical School at the University of Texas at Austin, Dr. Clay Johnston. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I, I don't know who decided that I should follow uh, Senator Watson in giving my comments, but, uh, but I'm going to have to look into that. I am, um, I am truly grateful and truly honored to, to, to be here. I mean, this is a, a tremendous responsibility, um, and the fact that you all would entrust it to me, I, I'm humbled by that. So um, President Powers, thank you so much for entrusting me in this, and, and uh, also Provost uh, Finvis for, uh, for uh, that trust. Um, in, in preparing uh, for uh, taking over, I went through all the, uh, all the documents that I could find about Prop 1 and about the other planning for the medical school, and it was remarkable how much work had been put into this, how many years of really hard work, commitment, and fortitude that went into it, and at the helm of all that was Senator Watson. So I think it's a, a really remarkable what you've achieved, and, and uh, um, so I want to thank you for making this, this possible. But as you just said, and, and everyone before me has said, the, the, uh, the, the real group that's uh, responsible for making this happen are the, is the community of Austin. Um, uh, to imagine that in the middle of a recession that the citizens of a city would agree to increase their property tax? Uh, I can tell you it wouldn't happen in San Francisco. <laughs> And I, and I use that as, a, as a, 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 something that I've told some of my friends about, well, why would you move to Texas? I'm not moving. I'm then moving to a place that's more ready for the changes that we've wanted to make than San Francisco is, and I, and I truly believe that. So I want to say a little bit more about my road here. So I, I began my career as a, as a neurologist. So I had no surgeries. I had study the brain. And I'm primarily caring for patients with stroke. Um, and stroke is a horrible condition um, that really um, often defines a person's life from there on and changes the, the whole family dynamics. And um, I became frustrated with how little we knew and how little we did to prevent those events. And so because of that, I decided I needed to, to uh, learn more tools about, about prevention and, and also figure out how we could better treat these patients. And so that's when I decided to go back and get the PhD in epidemiology and start to do clinical research and focused on that for a number of years. But then as I did that more and more, I, I came to realize that the pace of clinical research, the pace of research period, was way too slow. Lots of discoveries, lots of papers, very little changes and improvements in health. And it became obvious that the whole system needed to be looked at again. We needed to think about how can we change this, this research enterprise so that people benefit from these large investments in research. And so that's when I took on the, the role of heading this institute um, that was responsible for innovating to change the way in which research was done. So bigger and bigger questions started to become important to me. In doing that job, I quickly realized that we could no longer afford the innovation engine, that everything that we were doing, whether it's a new device, a new dr drug, it was driving up the, the uh, uh, cost of health care, and that we needed some balance. There needed to be a recognition that the value was important. Also, we'd sidelined technologies that had benefited every other industry. And so we started the, then this uh, uh, Center for Healthcare Value that was focused on how do we create the innovation engines to actually drive the value proposition to provide better care to patients while at the same time lowering costs. In, in all those things, we had wonderful ideas about how to change things, and, and some of them came to, to be. But innovation is um, about 10% coming up with those great ideas. 
and about 90% 90, 90 breaking down the dysfunctional structures that prevent you from getting there. There are so many people invested in the status quo that it makes it extremely difficult to move things forward. So even if you can envision a much better healthcare system, a much better system of education uh, for, for our medical students, you know, a, a much better research enterprise, getting there is not easy in existing systems. Um, and now I get to this, this opportunity. So this is, a, this is just a tremendous opportunity. To, to know that you're creating a world-class uh, medical school from the bottom up, and it's on a very strong foundation thanks to tremendous um, uh, inputs already that have, have happened across the community. Um, it, it just, it doesn't happen. It hadn't happened in at least 50 years. It's not gonna happen again for another 50. It's just an, an amazing opportunity. Um, to have such great partners too. So um, there are gonna be many partners in this endeavor, but in particular, um, Central Health and Seton are both fabulous partners that have been working on innovative models for healthcare delivery and are focused on serving everyone, improving the health for the entire community, even for those who, who uh, don't have insurance. I really look forward to, to working with them. Also, this really is a superb university. It's remarkable that there is no medical school here yet. Um, and I'll tell you, the other schools have been telling me that they agree. And it's about time that the medical school got going because they have all sorts of ideas about collaborative programs. And I'm, I'm very excited about, about developing those. They're tremendous opportunities given all the innovation, the great teaching too that happens across the system. And again, though, I come back to it, it's the community. The community that's so engaged in creating this medical school, the community is going to be integral in making sure that this medical school delivers on its mission. And I'm committed to going back to the community over and over again and making sure that we are meeting the mission that it created for us. So I'm very honored to be part of this critical endeavor. I see this really as a partnership, and I can help with those partnerships, but I like to sit on the edge of the table, not at the head. This is very unusual for me to be sort of at the, at the head of things. And that's the attitude that I'm looking forward to, to bringing forward as we, as we partner together to do this. I'm not interested in just creating another medical school. I'm interested in creating the medical school that really represents what we want health to be, what we want health education to be in the next century, and then making it nimble enough, responsive enough, that will keep Austin at the leading edge in health for centuries to come. Thank you.